Pep Guardiola, not good at mind games. He's one of the best in the business. You don't get to that level if you're not. Um, Kwaku, this is being billed as a title decider, which I find ridiculous given it's September. Where are you on that? Will it have a significant impact on where the title ends up? Um, not mathematically. There's still so many points to play for. But I do think psychologically for Arsenal to go to the Etihad and get a win for the first time since 2015 will do huge things for their confidence for a set of players that haven't gone and experienced that in an Arsenal shirt. And so that's a, I think that's definitely a factor. Um, I mentioned another show that me and you did together. In that 2015 win against Man City, Santi Carzola was still playing for Arsenal. I think Monreal got fouled by Yaya Torre for the penalty that Carzola scored. And then Olivier Giroud scored a header in the second half for Arsenal. Three of those players I mentioned don't play football anymore. And Olivier Giroud plays in America. And so that's how long ago it's been. And that's how... That's how much of a, I think, psychological thing is for Arsenal in terms of going to a place that you just don't get results at and getting the win. Last season was a good result. I think you should take it a step further this year. And if you do get a win, it's not saying that you're going to win the title. It's not saying the City are going to win the title or lose the title. But I do think it stands your team in good stead in terms of going to difficult places and getting results. And Ric Flair said it, to be the man, you've got to beat the man. And I think you've got to do that against City on the weekend. I do think there's... there's validity to that point I do think that if Arsenal go there and win psychologically the boost is huge I think if Manchester City win it doesn't really have that much of an impact on them because they already know that they're the real deal but I think it might damage Arsenal a little bit mm. so City kind of have it all to gain and, and you know they can maybe damage their o opponents psychologically a little bit but I just think because Arsenal won the North London derby last weekend most of the pressure around this game has been alleviated had they lost last weekend at Spurs and then come into this game knowing that defeat would put them eight points behind Manchester City, then you could say, even in September, that that's going to have a massive bearing on where the title ends up. But because Arsenal won the game last weekend, and the worst case scenario here is that Manchester City win, go five points ahead of them, but haven't been to the Emirates yet, a game you'd expect Arsenal to win if they want to be crowned champions then I don't think there's that much jeopardy in this game other than the psychological impact it could have on either side. So it, but, and it, so it depends then how important you think that is in the grand scheme of things. I think if you want to be champions in this world that we live in, that Pep Guardiola has dominated, especially when it comes to English football, you have to go to the champions and you have to beat them. I just think that there's something within that, not just the points that you gain, but it's the points you take away from them. It's the confidence that you give your players who haven't won the major trophies yet. Saliba was talking in the build-up to this game about how he thinks he's one of the best in the world, but he needs to start winning trophies and titles. And I think Arsenal is so close. You're so close to it. And I think it's a misnomer when people point to the game last season where Arsenal drew a City and said that's where you lost the league you didn't lose the league there there was other games we can point to them the West Ham game the two Fulham games the two Villa, Villa games. games like we know the games where getting four points against City in the season is very good going especially how dominant they've been but I I think that when I see teams that have won titles previously I look at Arsenal in 2002 Sylvain Wiltord winning the title at Old Trafford yeah. um, I look at Chelsea in the 09-10 season Didier Drogba scoring at Old Trafford to win the title um, against Manchester United I just feel like you've got to go there and get a win just for your confidence but if you don't win and you draw that game the sky's not falling you can go again there's so many points to play for Arsenal could still end up on 94-95 even pushing the high 90s in terms of points but just for Arsenal's confidence I think you should go there and win the reason I wouldn't be too panicked if Arsenal fell behind points wise to Manchester City is because I, when I compare the two sets of fixtures at the start of the season now everyone's going to play everyone but it's natural that at certain points in the calendar you expect one team to be ahead of the other. Arsenal will have been to, by the end of this weekend, Spurs, Villa and Manchester City. So to me, it feels natural that you might be a couple of points, maybe even four, maybe even five points off of the pace, given the start that Arsenal have had to the campaign. And then you factor in some of the injuries. Now, both sides have got injuries here. Is it fair to say that Arsenal will miss Martin Odegaard more than Manchester City will miss Kevin De Bruyne, who we think is is unavailable. I think because of the construction of your, your starting eleven, yes. But I'll ask you, do you think it levels the playing field? Do you think that any Arsenal fan can point to injuries as being an excuse if you don't beat Man City in light of them missing Kevin De Bruyne? I don't think you want to use it as an excuse. 
But I do think every game has its context and you have to look at the context around the game when you're trying to judge what the, the good outcome would be, what an acceptable outcome would be. And when you think about the fact that Arsenal went out in the summer and brought in another midfielder, and in my opinion, the, the plan was to play Rice, Marino and Odegaard, to go into this game with two of those three missing is a blow. Like There's no way of you know, packaging that up any differently. It is a hammer blow for Arsenal. For Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne is a player that they'll miss because he's so good. But they do have more capable deputies, in my opinion. And so it's less impactful on them. I'm not going to sit and use it as an excuse, but obviously, if we don't get the result that we want, I will be sitting there bemoaning the fact that we couldn't turn up and do it with our best players and give it a real crack and give it a real go, knowing that year upon year we've made progress in terms of getting closer to them. You know, the season before last, we went there and got battered when it really mattered. The season after we turn up there, we get a draw. Everyone criticises us for getting a draw, says that's not good enough, which in my opinion was way off the mark. And now we're at the point where you want to take that next step and go and beat them, but you're without some of your key tools. So, of course, it's a problem. I don't think we can call Moreno a key tool yet. We haven't seen him in an Arsenal shirt. Odegaard, I will, I'll take it. Right. But we haven't seen Moreno in an Arsenal shirt yet. So, it's not like you've missed out on something no, or somebody's proved that they can do a job in Arsenal's midfield if he de definitely was the starter. But he was brought in to be a part of the midfield that Arsenal are trying to redevelop. And Calafuri's been brought in to be part of the defence that Arsenal will eventually go forward with, but he hasn't started yet this season. And so... And he's not going to start on the weekend against Man City. So I get it with new signings, but until we've seen them establish themselves in the Premier League, and I don't think we can view that as a loss just yet. Um, but Of course you can view it as a uh, loss, Craig. Come I, on. I, don't, I don't think so, the, Harry. The, the reason is, is because what you're talking about here is you're going through the layers, right? So Calafiori has come in, but Arsenal have a very competent left-back right now in Jurian Timber. So if Calafiori's absent or not, it's not the end of the world because you've got that cover and protection there. Not only have you lost Martin Odegaard, but then it, let's say that Marino wasn't a starter, okay? Because if, if we're going to go down that argument of, you know, he hasn't played yet for Arsenal. If you take the Martin Odegaard layer away, the next thing is to bring Mikel Marino in. And you can't do that either. So you're saying so, that Thomas Partey is not capable? I'm saying that Thomas Partey looks like his legs have gone, mm, in my okay. opinion. I don't think he can be trusted to play as a lone six anymore. And then I look at the alternative and I think Jorginho and I think, yes, I can trust him in certain games and for a period of time. But let's be frank about where Jorginho is at in his career and understand the limitations of him as well. And then I think we don't have another like for like for Martin Odegaard. So where the, the solution would have been to bring Mikel Marino in, you can't do that. So it might not be missing two of your starting three if you don't want to look at it like that. But you've taken another layer away from what Arsenal can turn to when it comes to replacing Martin Odegaard and solving that issue. Yeah, OK. And, but Man City also, in my opinion, are missing the greatest centre midfielder in Premier League history. A player that when he came into this Man City side towards the back end of the season was really a catalyst. Of course, they're already on a good run, but he came in and really accentuated their run to the end of the season where they're unbeaten and they still haven't lost a Premier League game since the beginning of December. But look at what they can bring in. Foden, Walker, Stones, Gundogan, Doku, all left out of the starting eleven in midweek. I understand that. That's just the construction of the squad and that's, just the, that's what you're having to deal with. Arsenal did let go of some players that were surplus to requirements and Fabio Vieira is now injured at Porto anyway as Smith Rowe's not necessarily pulling up trees at Fulham but that's just the way the squads are constructed unfortunately to compete with Man City you're going to have to have a deep squad and you're going to have to avoid injuries you avoided injuries last season this season they're catching up with you and unfortunately you're going into your biggest game the biggest week of the season really one of the games missing Declan Rice and another game missing Martin Odegaard of course Marino's not there but that's just the tools that, or that's just the hand you've been dealt and I just don't want to hear that Arsenal didn't win that game because Odegaard wasn't playing because De Bruyne's not playing and I've not seen Mikel Moreno in an Arsenal shirt yet we're talking about a man that let's be honest very good player wasn't on people's radars a year or two ago had a decent Euros and we've seen him in the Premier League already play for Newcastle and he didn't look very good and so I know he's a different player right now but I don't want to... He's not the linchpin of Arsenal midfield. That no, won't no, be no, a reason no. why he won't go to the Etihad and get a win. But I, I do feel pretty confident in saying that he would have started by now if he was available. So that's the first thing. But I wouldn't say Calafuri would have started by now. I wouldn't have, though. 
Okay, because, fair enough. Because Timber was the guy that came in and took that left-back position and then very quickly suffered that injury. So you always saw, always felt that Mikel Arteta had plans for Julian Timber at left-back, right? The problem that Arsenal have as well, and this is definitely not an excuse, by the way, so please don't take it this way. <laughs> but the problem is, is that going into this game, Martinelli's out of form. I don't think Declan Rice is playing. Can I ask about Martinelli? Yeah, yeah. What? Of course, people online love to point to the fact that he hasn't had the goal contribution since, what, March? That I, <laughs> I want to ignore that narrative in terms of that. Him as a player, what's happened to Martinelli over the last year? Can't put my finger on it. And I did a podcast focusing on Martinelli about two weeks ago when, you know, we were starting to realise that his sort of below par form had carried over into this season as well. And one of the things I said is that if you look back through his career at Arsenal, it's been hot, cold, hot, cold in terms of the seasons. And it's, there's never been back to back seasons of Martinelli being at his best. What I think he gives Arsenal that Mikel Arteta really values and the reason that he keeps selecting him is because he gives him incredible work rate getting back and supporting the fullback. He stretches teams with his raw pace. And he's a runner that is going to provide you with an outlet in games where your backs are up against the wall. So in a weird way, games like Spurs away last weekend and this game that's coming up at the weekend are Martinelli games for me. But you also in those games are going to get very few chances and you need players on the end of them that are efficient in front of goal. And that seems to have completely evaded him. And I, I can't tell you why, because in the past, he was a very accomplished finisher. So is it a confidence thing? Is it the fact that Leandro Trossard's been in and out of the side and maybe he's feeling the pressure? Has the signing of Raheem Sterling made that even worse? I, I, I can't put my finger on what the problem is exactly, but it feels like his form has gone off a cliff and it's a big problem. So he's one. Rice is another one who isn't playing at the level that we know he can. Saka's involvement in games, I think, is going to be less without Martin Odegaard in the side, who seems to be his main kind of supply line. Jesus played last night at Atalanta and looked terrible, looked really off the pace. And then Kai Havertz, who was brilliant in the second half of last season as a centre forward, has been taken out of that position to accommodate the fact that we're missing players in midfield. So the whole picture just feels broken at the moment at Arsenal. And the defensive solidity is allowing us to pick up results, which keeps us in contention. And this feels like, to me, a week that we just need to get through. Anyway, we'll see how that one goes on Sunday. Big, big game coming up.